Hello. This is Lutris. Lutris is an otter. Super cute. Mustelid representation. Hell yeah. But check this out. Boom. And sure, that was just a ROM, but I can do anything with it. Steam, GOG, it's hooked up to my accounts. All I had to do was enter in my username and password like I would normally, and every single one of these games just works. Not only does it work, but it works better than Windows. It's faster, it's more compatible with different peripherals. I'm running a third-party Nintendo Switch controller, and my controller profiles are just set up. Oh no, we aren't using Windows here, you see. We're using Linux. That's right, Linux is the new gaming PC. So if you're looking at Windows 11, looking at how fucking... What the hell is this user interface? Looking at why am I being swarmed with advertisements? Looking at why is this so goddamn slow? Looking at, well, the fact that Microsoft is fucking evil and believes that it can continue to be evil because you have no choice. What are you gonna do? Move to the other evil company? They don't want you to know that there's a different solution. You're told over and over that Linux is hard. It isn't. You're told that Linux is weird and different, and you'll have to learn a whole new operating system all over again. You won't. You're told that it can't run your games. Well, as you can see, it can certainly run your games. In fact, some older games have an easier time running on Linux than on Windows. And the best part, it's completely, absolutely, 100% free. There is no catch. Many Linux distros, that is, different versions of Linux made for different purposes, are created and maintained by volunteers who just love what they do and want the electronic world to be a better place. It's almost like you don't need profit motive in order to inspire innovation, even innovation that far exceeds the so-called innovation of evil corporations. But I digress. You might be thinking, Okay, I'm kind of interested. I'd kind of like to get away from Windows. I'd like my computer to run faster, boot instantly, never suffer from memory leaks. I'd like to be able to alt-tab without my PC exploding. I'd like my games to just work right out of the box. I'd like my computer to not be full of crap I didn't put on it and that I can't seem to uninstall. I'd like to be quite literally immune to viruses. But what might be stopping me? What's the hard part? What's the catch? Well, you are installing a new operating system, which means you'll need to back everything up that you want to keep on something else. Copy and paste it onto an external hard drive, a flash drive, floppy disks, the cloud, whatever you need to do, because the hard drive that you have Windows on will be wiped. You'll be starting fresh. Other than that, nothing. But hang on, won't I have to learn how to use another operating system? Oh, oh god, where's where's the start button? Oh, oh wait, no, never mind, there it is. Same place, same place as it always is. Uh, but where do I find... Uh, oh, I, I can just I can just type it in. Or use a shortcut. But wait, ha, how will I be able to tell where my files are? I, oh, oh hang on, there's a, there's a file manager that's pretty much identical to the one in Windows. Actually, there is one little difference here. Really quick, notice how you don't have a C drive. All of your files are considered basically to be on one drive, and other drives are actually mounted onto a folder there. You can see those here, but you can also put that folder wherever you want, if you want it to be somewhere else. Basically, imagine that your D drive is just another folder on your C drive that you can tell to be anywhere you want. That might take a minute or two of getting used to and realizing that it's actually kind of cool. How do I install things in Linux, though? Don't I have to use the terminal a whole lot? Terminals are spooky. Terminals are nerd shit. I don't want to learn nerd shit. Awesome. You don't have to. 
Honestly, everything has a user interface these days, and once again, it's easier than Windows. What do you do when you want to install something on Windows? So let's, let's say we're installing Prot. Prot is a piece of linguistic software. It's kind of obscure, so it's a good example here. On Windows, I have to first Google Prot, then find the website, then click the right download button, download it, extract it to a place, hopefully I remember where that place is later, so that I can launch it. Or else, create a shortcut for it somewhere. Put that on my overly full desktop. Now on Linux, I open up this handy little program called a package manager. I type prot. I install prot. And then I'm done. Boom, it's there. Even this obscure little program is in the repository for you to search and just grab off the internet like it belongs to you. Oh, but what about proprietary shit? Stuff that I pay for. Video games, for example. I play Elder Scrolls Online, and that doesn't have a Linux installer. I mean, I could still go the Windows route, install the EXE, because you can do that on Linux. It all comes with Wine which is a Windows emulator, which is so seamless that you won't even realize you're using it. However, as you may have heard, that sometimes comes with a little bit of fiddling, a bit of playing around sometimes to make things work. But what did I tell you? Things nowadays, nowadays, things just work. Behold. It works, it's so easy, there's no reason at all for you to continue to use Windows. None. Windows is dead. You don't need to learn anything new, you don't need to do anything hard, just back up your important shit and download the coolest looking version of Garuda. Garuda is the distro that I personally recommend gamers start out with. Its KDE, Dragonized environment in particular, looks and feels just like Windows, or Mac if you wanted to. Only it's smoother, cooler, less cluttered. Garuda also runs on Arch, which, details aside, means that you have access to a ton of user-maintained repositories. That's how we search the package manager in order to download and install literally anything we want that runs on Linux. No endless link clicking, no terminal use, no fuss, no muss. Plus, you get to use the best pickup line ever, which totally works, trust me. <laughs> Once you have your Garuda ISO downloaded, find a USB drive. Your least favorite USB drive. One that you're fine with having all the info on it erased. You'll be turning this into a boot drive, which lets your computer boot the program you're installing onto the drive, rather than Windows when you turn it on. And the program we'll be installing onto there is... Garuda. So, download Rufus. Rufus is a tiny little program that lets you create boot drives. It's pretty simple. Once you've got it, open it, select the drive letter of your USB drive, select the Garuda ISO, tell it to write, and wait. When it's done, it'll tell you. Now is your last chance to make sure you've backed up everything you need. If you have multiple hard drives, I really do recommend you back up everything that you don't want to lose. I have multiple hard drives and admittedly I had some troubles because of it. I wanted to install Garuda to my solid state, and my old Windows install was on my HDD. Well, even though I removed Windows, Windows' bootloader continued to interfere with the Linux bootloader, so my computer just straight up wouldn't start until I went into a partition manager and wiped everything from both drives to truly start completely fresh. This is what I recommend you do as a result. So once you're prepared and all of your important stuff is now on some other drive you've backed it up to, and you've disconnected that drive from your computer just to be safe, it's time to restart your computer and say bye bye to Windows. As your computer restarts, you may have noticed before, there's a screen like this. It probably looks different to you, 
but there's always little instruction like this that says press a certain button to enter boot menu. Very often it will be delete. Sometimes it's F8 or F10 or F12. It really depends on the motherboard or BIOS your computer has. You've got just a second or so to press this button, so I recommend mashing it as your computer launches until you get your BIOS screen. Here you will be able to change the boot order of your devices. You want to find your USB device and bring it to the top or the front before your hard drive. If you have a lot of USB devices and you aren't sure which it is, honestly, it's fine to just put them all in front just to be safe. It won't hurt anything. What this does is tell your computer to look for something to load in your USB drive before your hard drive. So it finds that Garuda boot drive you just made with Rufus before it finds Windows. Once you're done, save your settings and exit out of the boot menu. If you did it correctly, Garuda should come up. Tell it to launch with open source drivers and this is what you'll get. It's very cool and it lets you see just what you're getting into. You can play around and see what Garuda is like right from here before you actually make any changes to your computer. Once you're ready though, it's time to install it. First, just to make sure there's no hiccups, nothing interfering, you want to wipe everything. Pull up the start menu and you want to find something called Partition Manager. This lets you see all your drives and all the partitions of them. Basically, different sections of your drives that perform different functions. What's there now doesn't matter because you're going to be erasing all of it. Wiping it. Clean slate. If it says you can't because the partition is mounted, right click it and unmount it and try again. Once that's accomplished, it's time to install Garuda. It's all pretty straightforward. What you do want to pay attention to is this part here where it asks how you want to install Garuda. Here, you have the option to automatically install, and if your setup is pretty simple, you don't have multiple hard drives or anything, you can just let it do it automatically. You may want to manually set the partitions though, and that's simple enough. There's some good and easy guides out there for this, I'll link them below so as not to bog down this video too much. Once Garuda is installed, you're all done. Restart your computer when it says, Unplug your USB drive when it tells you to, and you have a nice shiny new Garuda install. What now, you may ask? How do I get the things that I want? Well, when Garuda launches, you've got the Garuda welcome screen. This contains everything you could want to get started. And I'd recommend looking at two buttons in particular, Garuda Setup Assistant and Garuda Gamer. First though, you'll be prompted to update your system to the latest version and also install any proprietary drivers. Do all that and restart once more when it tells you to. You'll end up at the same screen after you do. In the Garuda Setup Assistant, one thing you'll really want to get is PAMAC. PAMAC is your package manager, and it lets you search for and find any software you want. Beyond PAMAC, Look through all the tabs and see what looks good to you. There's an open source Microsoft Office alternative without all the bloat and stuff like Blender and Audacity were designed with Linux in mind. You can find all of these through the package manager later, don't sweat it too much. In Garuda Gamer, there's more software too, specifically for games. There's Steam, and you, you know what that is. And there's two more that I personally use. Heroic Games and Lutris. Heroic Games is your Epic Games launcher. It's a lot more lightweight, doesn't spam your desktop, so Epic's Games itself is evil, but I like this launcher. And Lutris is your catch-all launcher. That is, you can link up your Steam account and your GOG account, as well as any ROMs you might have in your computer, any Windows games you download directly off the internet, anything and everything you can play from this one place. If you don't have the emulator or the runner you need for it, it even handles that too, as well as all the options to make it run. It's really, really cool. It's the last piece of gaming software you'll ever need. Make sure you get it. Once you've got Lutris and launched it, you can sign into Steam and GOG and Epic Games through Heroic. 
Lutris will prompt you to install the platforms necessary and will set them up to run the way they should. It's the same with any ROMs you might download, grab them, drag and drop them onto Lutris, and when you run them, if you don't have the runner, the program you need to run it, Lutris will grab it and configure it for you. Even Windows programs that you get online that won't normally run on Linux, you can just get by searching and installing through Lutris, using it just like a package manager. One more important step. In Steam, go into Settings, into Compatibility, and make sure both of these options are on. If a game isn't running, check its compatibility options and make sure that it's running under Proton. On the rare occasion that your game isn't working the way you want it to, see what people are saying about it on ProtonDB. You'll be able to find your solution there. Other than this, go ahead and check out the theme settings. Make your Garuda install your own. Have fun with it. Look at your settings in the file manager and everywhere else. Make it work exactly the way you want it to. Windows has been forcing you to work with it in one single way, and now you have all the freedom in the world to have everything operate in a way that makes sense to you. And that's all. Congratulations, you've migrated to Garuda, and you're ready to play games and use your computer faster, better, freer than you ever were with Bill Gates breathing down your neck. You've got security, you've got flexibility, and you'll never be forced to move to fucking Windows 11. Now, the last step of it all is tell your friends, spread the word, tell them Linux has not only caught up to, but surpassed Windows for gaming, and it's time we, gamers, told Microsoft just where to shove it and started playing by our own rules. <laughs>